<sighs> we all know how much Miss Emma loves her bed, so of course this video needs to be started in bed. <laughs> Letty is actually atrocious over there, so I have to move you over here, but I'm still in bed. We're staying in character today. Today, we are planning to stay in character because today I am embodying my inner Emma Chamberlain. It's not even inner, it's inner, it's outer, it's middle, it's everything. Emma Chamberlain is me, and me is Emma Chamberlain. The two are connected. The two are very connected. But today, I decided that since I'm in LA for spring break, I should try to embody Emma's LA girl morning routine. We all know the LA girl morning routine, like, you know, the basic one, like, but I feel like Emma's routine is very... I don't know. Moral of the story is, today I'm going to be doing Emma Chamberlain's LA morning routine. It is currently 9 o'clock. I plan to wake up a little bit earlier, but honestly, I didn't really have to. So I kind of was a little bit more leisurely this morning because I feel like Emma is very leisurely with her morning sometimes. She's very chill, very good with the flow type of individual. The biggest thing that's happening today is I booked a soul cycle class. Yes. Yes. Yes, what is going on? Soul Cycle is the epitome of Emma Chamberlain. Actually, no. I should preface that we all know that Emma has had many stages in life. She's had many eras, and I'm kind of taking all the parts of stages that I enjoyed or want to try and putting them together. So I'm pulling from her Soul Cycle era when she was like religiously addicted to Soul Cycle. I'm gonna try a Soul Cycle class. But this is also for me because I've been saying since quarantine started, I wanted to learn so, like, I wanted to try. Soul cycle. I wanted to get a soul cycle bike and put it in the house, but my mom was like, no. I booked a 10:30 class, and the reason it's for 10:30 because I, I would have wanted to do like eight. That way I can like get my day started earlier, like be productive, all that stuff. But I booked a 10:30 because here, this guys, here it is. It's a Dua Lipa class. Dua Lipa herself is not gonna be there, no. But will the whole track list be Miss Dua? Yes, it will. I'm gonna be riding my bike, and I'm gonna be like, I'm levitating. You can fly away with me tonight. You can fly away with me tonight. The way I saw that and I was like, I need to book that. So I booked it. So I have like an hour until I want to leave. I want to leave by 10 because again, this is my first time trying Soul Cycle. So they were like, if it's your first time, come early because like I have to set up the bike, all that. I'm a little bit nervous. I was going to do this with my friend, but she ended up having a meeting. So I'm tackling this alone, but I'm like, I can do it. Cause I, I'm mostly excited rather than nervous, because I'm like, it's Dua. Dua will get me going. It's Dua. Like, how could you go wrong with Dua? I brought workout clothes on this spring break trip specifically for this reason. I was like, I need to do, like, I can't come to LA and be a basic LA girly and either not do Soul Cycle or Hot Pilates. And Hot Pilates was a little confusing to book and it looked scary. So I was like, Soul Cycle. I'm trying to decide, should I wear like a cute, trendy white fox set? Like, what would Emma wear? Like, should I wear this trendy white fox set? It's like shorts, like this. I feel like this is cute, but like, am I gonna be uncomfy walking around alone in that? Or I have a black set, and I feel like black set is more that's more comforting for me. I feel like I won't stand out, and I don't want to stand out during my first Soul Cycle class because I don't want them to call me out and be like, "Hey, you!" And I'm just like. I think black it is. This is the black, but now I'm kind of second guessing myself because I don't know if this is trendy enough for LA. The pants are Adidas, so they have this cool like Adidas thing in the back. Is it not trendy enough? This is my third time being in LA and I've never been so scared about what I put on and I'm like, is this trendy enough? Every time I step outside, I'm like, do I look trendy enough to be here? Okay, let me try the white fox one. I know the white fox one is gonna look trendy though, but am I gonna be comfortable in the white fox? That's the question. Ugh. Okay, I tried on the white fox pants and immediately it's a no. Immediately I'm going back to the black because what is this? I mean like, I think it just looks weird. So like, it doesn't even matter that it's trendy because it looks weird. So back to black. And then I gotta decide what sweater I'm gonna wear because it's super cold in the morning. Morning. I think I want to do this one, but is this one gonna be too heavy? Only here what I think this much about my workout outfit and like literally I feel like nobody cares But at the same time, I feel like people do care. I get scared. Does that look tacky? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, this is good Like you can't go wrong with gray, right? This is fine. This is gonna do. Hi, I'm here for my first slow cycle class Hi. One task down, we got our outfit. No, Emma does not do this, but I am, sh ow, I stubbed my toe. But I am starving. LA is three hours behind New York. So although it's nine o'clock here, it's like, 
It's 12 o'clock back home and I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Like my stomach is still on New York time. A few days ago, I went to Trader Joe's and I picked up this little mango smoothie thing. And then my friend Raina said that it tastes really good. And then I have a Cliff protein bar. I want to do it now because I don't want to puke on the soles like a leg. I have not worked out in five months. Like I texted my mom last night and I was like, mommy, I booked a soul cycle class. It's a Dua Lipa class. It's going to be phenomenal. She was like, you're gonna die. And I was like, very valid. Like very honestly, very valid point. Not mad about it. This is good because it's an hour before. So like I could give my food a little bit of time to digest. That way I just don't, I'm like, I'm levitating. And then my, my breakfast levitates out of my esophagus and I'm just like, Bleh. Oh, is a ginger shot bad to have before a workout? I'm an LA girly now. Like I need to try a ginger shot. So I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just risk it all. I've never tried a ginger shot in my life. Emma's not really like a ginger shot type of gal. She's more like shot of caffeine, but I don't take caffeine in the form of coffee. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Ginger shot taste test. over dramatic but at the same time it wasn't and i'm out of water it just tasted like straight fire it burned like it burns the second i it's still burning right now i dumped the rest of it like i i got so scared of what was just like in my mouth that i dumped the rest of it down the drain like so quickly okay now my stomach is actually kind of burning and like i do not want you guys to be like maya you're being dramatic but i do think like first time taking a ginger shot like that was an intense experience like nobody really prepared me for what i was about to experience i do not know how people do that like every single like hour here like i don't know i feel like it's a lot to be a wellness guru okay everybody it is time to discuss my soul cycle experience i called the uber to head over there and throughout the whole uber i was sick to my stomach i was nervous i was scared and then as soon as i pulled up to the area that the soul cycle was in my nerves went up by times a thousand because this was the bougiest area in LA that I've seen so far. I don't know, it was just so bougie and like all the athletic girlies were there, the athletic jocks, and everybody was wearing like their like gym shark. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Then I pulled up the Soul Cycle. I went inside and luckily there wasn't that many people in the lobby like you know because I was early so I was like okay this is a little chill it did look really cute in there and they had the little Dua Lipa sign I was like okay they're welcoming I went there I signed in I told them it was my first time I mean the workers there were definitely they were they had the energy like the guy kept screaming but like screaming in a good way he was like oh my god girl like yes oh my god I'm so excited for you and I was like okay that was hyping me up so they signed me in I had to fill out a waiver and put my primary contact and I was like what the hell did I I just sign up for that i have to put a primary contact in case i fall over on this bike i literally have to put my mommy's number down because i was like what so i filled out the waiver basically signing my life away and then they were like okay let's get you the shoes and then he gave me like this quick little tour of the place and he showed me the lockers he showed me where the bathroom is and everything and he was like okay if you need anything else i'm here i was like uh okay so i immediately ran into the bathroom because that's where i go every time i go somewhere public alone it was the bougiest bathroom that i've ever been in why do they have myers soap to wipe my butt crack anyways so i put on my little uh shoes and i almost slipped and then they gave me a complimentary water and i was like oh yes and then it was finally time this is the only clip that i got of inside the actual room That was basically the only clip that I got because once I went in to set up my bike, the guy was like, yeah, no, there's no phones in here. Just go put your phone in the locker room. The guy helped me set up my bike. And basically what had happened was I booked a seat all the way in the back. But when I got there to check in, the guy was like, it's an intimate class. Like there's not that many people in this class. So I'm moving you to the front. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. okay. So he moved me to the front. It all got started. And basically they like, they like lock your feet into the bike like the shoes have like this little lock on it and they lock your feet into the bike i mean they show you how to get out of it but the guy was like yeah it's a little bit hard for newcomers so like if you need help just ask somebody i'm like what do you mean what if i need to spontaneously pee or puke and i can't get my feet out of these bikes so that was kind of freaking me out that i was like locked into this seat the instructor got started he had high energy like you know that was kind of getting me pumped up 
and then we started riding and I was like okay this is different than when I ride my bike with training wheels like this is a different experience because you're not supposed to sit your butt down on the seat you're supposed to just be like crouching so you can feel the burn and I was like oh god no like five minutes in and I was ready I was like what did I sign up for but then I started to get into the groove and then he came the instructor came up to me and he was like hey like what's your name like and I was like my name's Maya and I'm like yeah that's my first time and then he shouted out to the class he was like everybody say hi to Maya it's her first time and i was like <laughs> i mean like i was dying at certain points but like 10 or 15 minutes in i started to relax a bit and i felt less anxiety because i was like you know what everybody knows i'm new i can take my time i can do my thing i can sit my butt down on this seat if i need to but i also found myself like really pushing myself and i heard lauren geraldo talk about this once like when she goes to workout classes she like works out on a different level because she finds herself being competitive with the other people there and i was like that because i was sitting literally inches next to two other people on the bike and all of a sudden like i was in competition mode i was like i cannot fall behind i was pushing myself i was like banging it out i was upping the intensity because i was like there's no way i'm gonna look like a fraud here today i want them to be like oh she must have done this before but she said this was her first time is, is she like an olympian and we just don't know i was pushing myself to the max yeah i was dead afterwards but overall great experience they're playing music here so i don't know how loud it is but i just finished soul cycle and i'm like so scared of this area because it's so bougie equinox dry bar like this is like really bougie and i'm just sitting here like hey and i feel like they're gonna be like get out i'm sitting here but it's so pretty like look like sneakily film but I'm sitting here recovering from that experience. I'm gonna take an Uber to Erewhon. It says it's like 13 minutes away. Welcome to Erewhon, everybody. So if you don't know what Erewhon is, it's basically the most expensive grocery store in the world, probably. Like, I would say it's the most expensive grocery store in the world. So, like, their prices for things are outrageous, but it's, like, the epitome of LA because everything is, like wellness like gut health everything is like organic times a thousand like made with like crystals and fairy dust and they like charge like fifty dollars for like a bottle of water or something like that like it's crazy expensive and i was just baffled by the fact that there was so many people in there doing like regular grocery shopping like you get 10 items in there and that's like 200 300 like their bananas were probably 20 dollars, and i saw regular people just like buying like at least 40 things but all in all i can see why the la girlies like it it's a fun experience like it's a fun vibe to just see like the crazy things that they have and the crazy prices it's kind of like you know like guess that price like you can make a game show about it of like oh like show this thing on air one like how much could it be we have returned this lighting is so scary but i hope it's okay let's first give an air one haul they gave me a little baggie this bag itself was probably a dollar she was like do you want a bag i was like yeah and then i was like fork that bag was probably a dollar. Even their bags are probably expensive. First thing that I got is this poppy beverage. It's like a soda. It's like a knockoff Coca-Cola. This is like special LA Coca-Cola because it says that it's for a healthy gut. And it's only five grams of sugar. Yeah, it's basically supposed to be healthy cola. We're gonna try this out. And then we got this. You guys do not want to know how much this was. Actually, it says it on it. I don't even have to say the crazy number, but I got their sushi special of the day because it sounded really good but that's how much i paid guys yeah i know kill me like honestly kill me but i did it for you guys like i honestly just did this for you guys you know i wanted you guys to experience this with me and through me i have tried air one sushi before last year when i came to la and i did enjoy it was it worth 70 no but i did enjoy it and then the moment we were waiting for the classic emma chamberlain kale and white bean salad the last time i went to air one i did not know how to order this salad because i thought it was in the pre-made salad section however you have to stand online and like order it through the people like in the back like it like the buffet style she asked me what size i asked for a small because i was like a small is six dollars i did not want to know what a large was my erwan total was 26 dollars and 68 cents for three things but it's for the experience i feel like it's one it's a once a year type of ordeal you come visit la you're like all right let me go to this bougie shit i'm surprised they did not charge me for these chopsticks all right let's try the salad first i see no fork so we will be eating this salad with chopsticks It 
it's definitely good. You definitely have to like salad to like this because it's a very like light dressing and it has like, you know, it has some like pine nuts. Actually, let me read the thing. It's the fact that <laughs> everything that I have to read, every ingredient starts with organic. Organic white bean, organic kale, organic avocado, organic pumpkin seeds, organic, no, this is a problem. Organic sunflower seeds, organic lemon juice. How do you have organic lemon juice? It's from a lemon. Organic olive oil? No, 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 but the mustard, the maple syrup, and the salt is not organic. You give me all that organic shit and you can't even give me organic mustard. I'm gonna save some of this and eat my sushi first. Stunning. This is supposedly like a crispy rice vibe. Amazing. Um, I know this one is crunchy tuna. Have no clue what these other three are, but I'm excited. Pop up the cola. Mm. No, yeah, it's good. Back in the room and I look Oh my god, I look so terrible. It's because I haven't done my edges. That was another thing. I was in the Soul Cycle class and everybody looked stunning. Everybody looked gorgeous while they were sweating. Sweat was glistening and they just looked magnificent. And I was sitting there like sweating on my edges like, uh. I'm about to go to Alfred. So at first I wasn't going to get any coffee or any drink because I am so stunning. Stuff that I think I might genuinely puke. However, basically I have to go to an event at five. I need some caffeine, some sugar, like to like whoop, just wake me back up because I could take a seven hour nap right now. I could. That soul cycle on top of eating that huge meal really just drained me. It really did. We're gonna get Alfred's. I'm gonna try to get like a latte or like a coffee. I know Emma doesn't drink lattes. She drinks like coffees or cortadas and stuff like that. But listen, man, my stomach is already doing twisted knots and I don't feel like going shits when I have to go to this event and I'm like, excuse me, where's the bathroom? So we might have to settle for a chai. Actually, no, I'll do a matcha. We'll act like we're in our Emma Chamberlain matcha phase because she was obsessed with matcha at one point. Do I like matcha? No. Is it a happy medium between latte, coffee, or like chai? Yes. Oh, I'm so tired and I need energy because like the day just started. Like I can't be tired. I put on this shirt. That way I'm a little bit more covered up. You know, it's a very popular thing to walk around in just like sports bra and just leggings around around here, but I'm used to New York, where if that happened, I would get screamed at by a bunch of 50 year old men, but it's actually different. I have not been catcalled since I've been to LA, and all three times that I've been to LA, I've never been catcalled. I mean, knock on wood. It might be a driving thing and that like there's not that many people that walk while I've been walking like and I've been wearing shorts That's normally like a no-no for me in New York as soon as I put on the shorts I'm like ah for the creepy pedophiles are gonna try to yell at me But here I think it's because everybody is wearing like shorts and like next to nothing because it's hot So nobody has the time I would be terrified to walk outside in New York City in these leggings because I'd be like the pedophiles This is very on brand for Emma, but I'm back in bed. Picked up my matcha. I am a little bit mad at myself for not trying it there because it is completely unsweetened. But luckily the boba is sweet. So that's like adding, you know, a little bit of sweetness, but I definitely would have needed like 30,000 more pumps of sugar. I feel like the fact that I'm back in bed in the middle of the day is very on brand for this video because I think that's the epitome of Emma in all of her stages. Just like the bed. She's always in bed. Her bed must be really comfy because she's always in bed. <laughs> I've just done my edges really quickly. I also popped in some contacts, but only to do my makeup. I will be putting my glasses back on to actually go to the event because I want to be able to see people when I'm talking to them. And sometimes when I have these contacts in and I can't see through them, I look at people kind of cross-eyed because I can only see out of this eye. So I'm like, and it, it doesn't work. And we have our two drinks to give us energy here. This one's definitely like, it's giving me a little kick. Oh, it contains 50 milligrams of natural caffeine. 50 sounds like a lot. 
I feel like we should do a quick chat about like the elephant in the room. Her YouTube hiatus. Yes. Emma Chamberlain decided that she's gonna take a break from YouTube. She didn't say for how long. It could be a year, it could be a few months, it could be seven years. She said that she's not quitting. So until she says that she's quitting, I'm holding up hope that she will come back because hands down, forever and always, I think she is and will be my favorite YouTuber. And I don't understand the Emma Chamberlain effect, but at the same time I do. Why her out of all people am I just, am obsessed Anything that Emma does, I will watch, tune into. She has me watching Vogue videos, paparazzi videos, anything to get a little sliver of Emma Chamberlain, I'm watching it. But I think it's her personality. I feel like she's relatable, but of course not in the like financial lifestyle way. I feel like she's relatable in the sense that like, I feel like she doesn't try to act a certain way on camera or she's like, you know, I don't, I don't know where I'm, I don't know. But back to the hiatus. I think that this was like not long overdue, but I can see why this has happened. Okay, so I went on a whole 20 minute rant about this and like, when do I not? But like, I feel like I wasn't articulating my points properly. But my main point is that I feel like Emma Chamberlain never wanted to be famous. And, and, and that's like with factual evidence. Like I say that with evidence. Yes, it's an opinion, but like she said it like she said like she doesn't like people in her business she likes to live a private life like she doesn't like paparazzi she doesn't like that limelight and she literally became the most one of the most famous youtubers and i feel like the fact that she is like the opposite of like seeking out a famous life and then she got this famous life because of her youtube channel and like this social media career made her resent the youtube career in a way that's just my that's my feelings and i also when i look at emma chamberlain i don't see social media influencer i don't think emma chamberlain ever wanted to be an influencer just based off of the way that she talks about the social media realm and how like things could be kind of fake but i think part of the reason that everybody gravitates to her is because she seems like the most authentic and genuine person on the internet because I feel like she hates the internet. Like she literally deleted TikTok. She hates the internet, I basically feel like. And then my other point is that Emma Chamberlain basically started her YouTube channel when she like had no friends and she hated her high school. And she started it as this creative outlet where she was like banging out videos every day because like it was this fun thing. There was no expectations at all. And then she literally became this mogul with 11 million people having expectations of like a video every week and for it to be like great and like, like a certain way and like i feel like that makes it feel like you have no room to grow or no room to take a break because youtube was supposed to be her creative outlet and that's what it was in the beginning but then once it became her career then it's more influenced by the opinions of others i feel like that's why she keeps getting burnt out she's losing her creative drive for youtube and she's feeling like it's more so just a job but i genuinely do think that this was long overdue and I, of course, I'm sad that I'm not going to get Emma Chamberlain videos, but at the same time, I'm excited to see where she goes in the future. Like, she's still doing the podcast. She's posting a lot more on Instagram, and I feel like we're going to see her transition more into, like, mainstream celebrity media. Like, she's gone to the Oscars after party. She's gone to the Met Gala. Like, I feel like she's going to transition into becoming more of a celebrity type. I feel like she's also always gonna have that one up on certain celebrities because we know who she is or like at least we think we do because we watched her grow up for the past four years so like we have that relatability we still feel like she's authentic the difference between watching emma chamberlain and zendaya and yes i know don't hate me i love zendaya zendaya is a queen she's an icon but i don't know jack squat about zendaya other than that she's dating tom holland and she has a dog like you know and i feel like the fact that i don't know that much about her makes it a little bit less of a relationship and more of just like an icon fan type vibe whereas i feel like emma chamberlain is literally my best friend like i literally look at everything she does and i'm like oh my god bestie so like i would cry if i met her because i that would literally feel like meeting your long lost best friend so i feel like she'll always have that one up on other celebrities because she has that like connection to all of her fans that's just my tea on that that might not have made any sense but that's just my thought process comment down below your thoughts on emma chamberlain as a whole like do you hate her do you love her do you think she's doing the right thing what path do you think she's going on i don't know yeah that was kind of a rant too that was ugh whatever goodbye i've been really enjoying la this trip each trip that i've had to la is like a very different experience and this trip i'm really enjoying it but i still would say that i would never move here specifically but california 
I think I want to explore other parts of California. And I also can see myself when I'm like retiring, I can see myself. I can see myself like getting a beach house in like a small town and like retiring on the beach. One thing about California or just like being in LA is everybody seems very happy. That could be an outward facade, like that could be completely false, but everybody seems very happy and relaxed and chill. And I feel like it's because it's always warm. Part of the reason that people on the East Coast are so like, go, 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 a lot more anxious a lot of the time is because like you never know if you're gonna wake up one morning and it's gonna snow or if you're gonna wake up one morning and it's gonna be 90 degrees. Like the fact that right before I left New York, it was the first 70 degree day and people were like bouncing off the walls, screaming in the streets, like going crazy because it's like, you don't know if this is going to be the last 90 degree day we're going to get for the next two weeks and it's going to be a snow blizzard. I feel like weather and sun has a major impact on your mental stability. For the past week that I've been here, I've been so happy. I just want to be outside. I want to be in the sun. I still don't know what I'm wearing. That's what's freaking me out, but I have an idea. So I think we should be okay. Okay, more highlight. Oh, I didn't do brows. I literally just do the Benefit Brow Pomade and I just brush them up. I don't even know if there's still product in this. I don't think there is. I think it's a placebo. I feel like it doesn't look that bad. Okay, but my the vanity, however, the vanity looks bad. The vanity looks very bad. We'll cross that bridge another time. Here's what I'm thinking for my outfit. This jaded London top, because I didn't really bring anything that gives like a vent. I packed really weird from this trip. I did not pack very well. So I feel like this is kind of stylish. So it's kind of giving, you know, event vibes. I think we're gonna do these dark cargos. And I feel like this is giving very New York. Like the dark vibe of it is giving New York, but maybe that's what I want to give off. Like maybe I just need to like, this is real, this is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now. A let light shine on me. This is the outfit that I've decided on. I hate that there's no full length mirror to see, but I'm on my red Converse and I put my hair up in these pigtail vibes and then I put on these little sunglasses. I was like, I literally tornado, but I was trying on everything and I felt like the simplest thing tends to just like go over well with everybody. So it was like basic with like hints of jewelry to make me look a little bit more put together. Last voiceover of the day, guys. I promise. I know you're sick of hearing my voice. You're like, shut up. I'm sorry, but I just had to describe what was happening. So basically I went to this event and it was all the way in Santa Monica. So I took an Uber there and it was like a 40 minute Uber because the Uber had like traffic. I don't know, there's traffic, whatever. Um, and I realized that I drank so much of that carbonated poppy drink that I had to pee so goddamn bad. So I was sitting in there, um, I was sitting in the Uber, like about to cry because literally like he was hitting bumps and I was like, ah, I could feel the pee like trickling out of my body. And I was like, I just need to get there. I just need to get there. I just need to get there. And I need to pee. I need to pee. Um, so eventually I made it to Santa Monica literally walked into like one of those like like common like bathrooms literally on the beach i'm walking in my sneakers and like this full-on outfit on the sand to go to this like toilet on the beach and i did it and i peed so that made me feel better and here was the event it was so so cute it was an event for essie and it was really really nice it was on the beach they had this whole skate park and i was like only in LA like New York could never have an event with like a whole skate park like the vibes were there like the sun was setting it was so pretty they were doing manicures for people like also I love SE nail polish like random but like love it um they gave me an ice cream sandwich that was a vibe and then I stayed there and I watched the sunset and I was like this was a good day this was in fact a great day <laughs>